Welcome to the Home Business Podcast with Richard Captain Henderson, publisher of Home Business Magazine, and Sherilyn Colleen, managing editor. This how-to show helps you successfully operate your home-based business. Greetings and welcome to the Home Business Podcast. I'm Richard Captain Henderson, your skipper at Home Business TV. And I'm Lynn, your co-host. Let's go for C and get underway. To succeed in home business often requires pulling together a community of clients. Through the power of social media and online platforms, you link together a market segment and grow your business from there. As the home business owner, you connect the dots to bring your market together. Today's podcast guests have connected the dots to develop their market segment with impressive multi-channel content. Cindy Bogart and Mary Gervais are on a mission to incorporate traditional methods and products in today's lifestyle through their website, Artisans List. So greetings, Cindy Bogart and Mary Gervais. Welcome to our podcast. Say hi. Thank, thank you. you. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, thank you for coming on our show. How's it going in beautiful Rhode Island? It is gorgeous here. Yeah, oh, it is. Those... The weather has turned. Everything's green. No, I remember mm-hmm. my time in Newport, Rhode Island with the Navy. It's it probably not a better place on earth. So one is that you're in Newport, and then you're in, uh, Cindy, you're in, is it Kingsbury? Or? No, I'm, I'm in Kingston. Newport. Cindy's in Newport. Yeah. Oh, both. All right. Yeah. So I'm about 10 minutes from Narragansett, if anyone knows Rhode Island. Okay. All right. Perfect place. Uh, perfect place to be entrepreneurs. It actually is. It is. It really is. So let's start connecting the dots. Talk about Artisans List, an online directory, magazine, and community encompassing traditional basics, including old home restoration, craftsmanship, and farm-to-table sources. Cindy, you want to start? Well... <laughs> Artisans List basically is the whole concept is to um, give people the options of going back and finding traditional methods to incorporate in their life or to, if you have an old house to find sources that you can help restore the old house. There's, you can find them out there. There's a lot of networks and a lot of places to, you know, to go source them, but they're all over the place. Artisans List is one place, one-stop shopping where you can find products for or, or services or professionals for your old home restoration, craftsmanship, so you wanted to find a, somebody who could do a custom fireplace for you, you'd be able to find them on Artisans List, or farm-to-table resources, so your local farmer's market, your local um, uh, rancher who might be selling beef or pork for, you know, for that matter, or even fresh eggs. And we've included those uh, topics together because, um, or those headings together because It's really a mindset. It's a sustainability lifestyle that people kind of gravitate towards. And if you are restoring your house, chances are you're going to probably think about having your own kitchen garden. Or if you are a farm-to-table person, you tend to like that old beam that you want to put in your apartment or something that you want to include in your life that has a little bit more of a story behind it and more more of a heritage. So a key a key point here in this is that there's a there's a similar mindset, a similar connection between all of your customers. And so that, that kind of builds the relationships that you're featuring on Artisan's List. That's right. It does. Yeah, it, absolutely. <clears throat> and I mean, we have a wide range of uh, people who come to this site. You know, our demographics run about age 25 to 65. So it's all across the board. But, you know, we find, you know, even if you're a younger person and you might not own a house, you might want to do something, you know, even a room with a traditional piece of furniture, you know, and start collecting there. Or you, if you're, you know, looking to uh, restore the home, um, it could be someone in their, you know, 30s, 40s, 50s, but a lot of them are, it's, it's major. Like, they're like, where do I find a structural engineer or, um, you know, a, a preservationist who can help. Well, there, there's a degree of specialization mm-hmm. then in some of the things you might be doing with, say, when you get into construction, um, a similar specialization that people would need to find resources for. Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's basically the same mindset. But I think what our, our clients are looking for are our customers. And we have two, actually, we've got the customers is one and then the vendor is the other. So we have two audiences that we cater to. But what both of them are basically looking for is uh, to keep that story going on. I mean, the, people are looking for more depth in their life, more experiential things. I mean, I'm sure you've heard that the, um, the millennial generation really wants to go on vacations. They want to experience everything, right? That's all about experiences. 
Well, this is the same thing. They're building their nests the same way. They have to have something that means something. So instead of buying candles from the local store, you know, grocery store, they're looking for that person who's actually making the candles from scratch with organic materials. That has more meaning to them. So that's what we're really all about. We're, yeah, we're, you could almost say there's an emotional connection. In that it's, it's totally an emotional it's connection. It's emotionally important yeah. to them. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It, Definitely. And, you know, our, we, we say all the time that everything has a story and I think people learn things too. You know, I'm sure that your grandparents taught you how to do something and you don't always get that out of a book. So uh, that's why our community is so important. Um, people share ideas and, you know, tips of how to do things um, because you you might not know how to do a, a, a quick shortcut, we'll say, for something or how to figure something out. Um, so we think that that's really important. Well, you certainly can't get that connection at Walmart. So uh, it looks like you're on to something. Well, you know, why did you create a publishing and online business to target this niche? You know, what was your brainchild here? You know, that's a, a really good question. Um, we, I was, well, both Mary and I have been to a lot of farmers, uh, farmers bazaars or, or antique markets, and we realized that a lot of the people who were showing there did not have basically even a website, if that at all, and if they did, it was antiquated. Uh, and they had such great stuff, so we wanted to kind of connect them with the real, real viewer. But there is also another element to this. People who want all this stuff, who are looking for those stories and those products, don't have time to go looking for them. So we felt we had to bring them into one location and give them the sources and then help these people who really could not give a flying dang about being online the opportunity to be online. They know they had to do it. They just couldn't figure out how to get there and what to do. So we give them a listing. We help them. We promote them on our social media uh, platforms. Uh, we, we give them all kinds of um, information. Mary is going to be starting a podcast, and it's just for businesses um, to learn how to be businesses, how to, you know, how to get your financing, how to do all the basics and stuff. So that will help, um, you know, help our businesses grow. Um, so now we have, you know, some two, two levels that feed each other. So that's a really good point to bring out. You're not, but beyond connecting your customers and your vendors together, you're also providing, um, some, some kind of services almost with, giving them an online platform, a yes. uh, way to feature themselves, a way to, um, you know, do some of the things they would have to do as business owners, but you're, you know, you're, you're helping to host that and facilitate that a lot better than they could do on their own. They have no time for it. They don't have time. And, you know, we always say we're helping our small businesses meet new, new folks, get more sales. Um, I mean, it's really important. And, you know, when you're working um, in your business, you don't always have time to work on it. So we're, we're creating the community for them, but we're also giving them um, the sources, you know, if they want. We have three listing levels on the site, so they can do a free level. Uh, which gives them exposure, but if they want to do a, it's a ten dollar a month level. They get like a five tab mini mini web page, which you know for a business, if you don't have time to do a lot of online things, that's very helpful. And we also give them social media love, so we help them. You know, um, we might post about them on um, Instagram or put something about them on Pinterest. Um, so we help them get exposure that way too. Yeah, it's a really important point to bring out that model. When you're dealing with people online, you always want to draw people in initially with free and get them started and then, you know, sell them on it to become more comfortable. Then it's, you know, it's the upsell and then, you know, providing a, a higher level of, of engagement uh, and you're following that model and that's a good direction to go in. Yeah, it's been working for us so far. We, we have about uh, 2,800 people on the list with another 1,500 in the wings that we're processing right now. So uh, it's not where I want to be. Both Mary and I would like to see us at 100,000, which would be awesome. But um, we're just starting off in the last couple of years. And so far, it's been very, very well received. Yeah, it, seems like, uh, it just seems like a marriage made in heaven with uh, this, this market. And I've never heard of anything about it. Uh, before serving it, so it looks like well, you're in the right place at the right time. It's a niche that's not been not been filled. So we, ha- you know, it's an untapped resource that I think really has to be put together. And I also think that um, with social media now, this is a it's uh, very visual everything, 
and people like to see pictures and they want to see how projects are done. So that has really helped us, um, you know, bring in people, get them to see what we're about. Um, so that's, that's been a great uh, benefit for us. So how else did you initially pull clients into your artisan list to build it up from the start? Well, we've gone, Cindy and I have gone, like we were talking about in, in Western Mass, there's a very large um, antique fair, it's called Brimfield. So, I mean, we have gone and we've talked one-on-one -on -one with people. Um, hi, this is what we're doing. We've gone to national trade shows. We've talked to brands. Um, we've gone to an interior design show, you know, to, to get people's feedback. We did focus groups. Um, you know, we've done five focus groups with different people consumer and both uh, small businesses, getting their feedback. What are they looking for? Uh, Cindy, what else am I missing? Well, we've, we've had this funny word of mouth thing going yes. on. So. No, there's nothing better than word of mouth. No. <laughs> it's been great. It's been great. So like we even had, we had this one uh, business up in Alaska. I mean, Alaska. And they told somebody who told somebody to who told somebody, and we now we have a bunch of businesses from Alaska. Everybody in Alaska knows each other, so yeah, they must because now they're all on artisans list. So, no, but, you know, another thing we we've, we've approached some guilds and different um, organizations. So once you talk to someone in in that community, it is it's the word of mouth. They start sharing it. Well, I'm really fascinated with this because you've kind of uh, a unique way you've gotten outside of the internet to initially make these connections. So, you know, it is all about connecting um, your consumers with the businesses. How, you know, talk us a little bit more about, you know, how you've, you know, made those connections and developed those connections. Well, honestly, this has been probably the hardest part of the business because we really wanted to do this organically authentically if you you know those are like really you know catch words but those are really how you have to go about doing this business so we, we have gone out there and met people face to face and it's been a very very um, interesting journey but it's it's been worth it and you know everybody on the list ha has been you know cultivated by us or found by us or we've connected with them or they have connected with us uh, not anybody can be on the list you have to be either apply or be approved Oh. So it is totally a niche directory. So we don't want to have, like, we've had dentists from Iran. You know, come on, it's not going to happen on the list. But, you know, they, people have tried to get on the list no matter what. And it's, it's, uh, it's very, very, um, it's not exclusive. It's just niche. You but, I mean, actually ac having some exclusivity on that, I think that's almost a, a good thing. It's almost sometimes when you go to buy a product, you go for the higher price product just because that, that, project some quality and some exclusivity. Yes, but uh, you know, a lot of them, they're, they're unique um, services, they're handcrafted products. You know, if they're doing farm to table, it definitely has to be um, homegrown, mm -hmm. um, not, mass, batch, not, yeah. mm -hmm. not mass produced, small batch, you know, so we're, um, those are kind of the things we look for. You know, when people come on, they can do an application online, and then we look we look at them. And sometimes Cindy and I go back and forth and discuss. Okay, do, are they really a fit for us? You know, so so um, that yeah, so that dentist in Iran, he didn't he didn't get through. He did no. not get on. He did no. not get on. <laughs> we had people from all over the world. A lot of people from Russia. Um, a lot of people. But, from well, not to get no, side but, not but, to get sidebarred on that, but the problem with. Um, you know, you're doing the right thing by by putting a gateway up because a lot of entities around the around the world are using these kind of platforms for search engine optimization. They just want to get their they want to get you up and indexed, and uh, yep. that's one more reason you're smart to do what you're doing to well, uh, you know to check. Well, we're trying out. to save our customer time. This is that we know when they come to Artisans List. We want them to know that the people that they're finding have been reviewed by us, approved by us, and it's it's in the ballywag of what they're looking for. So the whole idea is to save people time to find them what they need in order to help them live this kind of lifestyle. And you know, we don't do we do not rate the businesses. We we uh, you know say okay, you can be on, but it's it's customer rated. Um, and also, I do want to mention that it's a national directory. So it's U.S. and Canada. Um, so I should say North American. Yeah. But um, because we've started um, initially in New England, and um, we've grown. But we right now, um, most of our 
um, viewers are coming from California, the Chicago area, Texas, you know, New York, and New England. But we certainly hope to get the word out to everybody. Now, each business faces its own obstacles. What struggles did you face when you were breaking into your market? Tech. Tech. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. We have, we have gone through uh, a lot of learning lessons with development because our, our website is online, obviously. It's a WordPress base because we feel that that was the easiest way for us to progress for what we needed to do. Uh, but but developing with you know, finding the right tech teams has been a very very big obstacle. Uh, you know, learning how to get people on the list hasn't been an obstacle, but it's been a journey. So those are the the two things. Mary, what do you think? Yeah, I would say it, it's tech and um, just getting the people because th there's a varying degree with all of the businesses. You know, you've got the people who don't have any online presence at all. Then you people who do have presence they might have a website but it could be 10 years old and they haven't updated it you know then you have people who are online but they're they don't really know how to connect on social media and then you know our other um customer is someone who's really savvy you know they've got their social media accounts they've got their website but their issue is they're just too busy doing other things um as i always say you know working in it, not on it, and they don't have time, you know, for extra. Well, yeah, I mean, they're, they're staying in their swim lane, which is smart. Mm -hmm. So can the client actually go in and uh, edit themselves? Can they go in and edit yes. their listing online? Yeah. It's a front-end user, you know, user directory, very, very simple to go in. They, could, they actually, when they apply, there's a way to apply directly on the site in the upper right-hand corner. You can apply, you open up an account, start your application, you put all your information in there, so now you've got your own little dashboard that you can do things with. And actually everybody, normal people, like normal people, like regular people who are doing their, their houses and everything, can also open up an account and just do, have a user account. So now they can save their favorites, they can mark which article they liked, and uh, it will all stay right in their little their little dashboard for them to go back and review. It kind of keeps dry. It can't kind of keep drawing them in ongoing then to uh, keep connected. Well, you know, social media plays a big part in keeping your online platforms strong and vibrant. Talk to us a little bit about how you use social media within uh, Artisans List. Want me to do this one, Mary? Sure. Go yeah. right ahead. <laughs> okay. So we have about 140,000 direct followers on social. Um, most great. of them are on Pinterest because that's a very visual thing. A lot of our, our, our consumers are on Pinterest. It's, you know, Pinterest is basically your, uh, your filing cabinet for your ideas. So they will pin a lot of our stuff into their idea, you know, favorite books, uh, favorite um, uh, folders. So that, that really works for us there. Instagram, obviously, we're big. And we actually just started Facebook, believe it or not. Um, we were kind of shy. We were on the fence about it. I know people are all on the fence about Facebook. Mm -hmm. but we seem to have a lot of um, the smaller communities that were the able groups, to talk Facebook to. Facebook groups are really mm -hmm. good for us. So, so we're excited about our new Facebook venture, even though you know it's a little uh, well, different. I think you would get like a little more depth out of Facebook if you can, you know, put groups together there via Instagram, which is just growing in super importance. But it just kind of gets out that instant snapshot. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's a good balance there. Mm -hmm. It is, and we and uh, uh, you know the younger people are on Instagram because you know they wake up in the morning and they look at their Instagram, who's doing what, and they kind of get a feel of what's going on in the world. Um, the older people are all on Facebook, mm -hmm. and even though they might have Instagram, they really go to Facebook for their news. So we're we're hitting both mar both ends of the spectrum that way. Cindy Bogard and Mary Gervais, this has been a great discussion on building a niche community. Do you have any final points you'd like to share? Mary? Well, I would just say, you know, one of the, I think, most special things about Artisans List is we take a very personal approach about everything, um, you know, connecting with our businesses. Um, we email them. We try to create a um, relationship with them. And um, we love to hear from people. So any feedback from our, um, the consumer or the businesses is fantastic. I think, I that's think it's, this is fascinating. Well, Cindy Bogart, Mary Gervais, thank you for being such great guests on the Home Business Podcast. Thank you to the thank both of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much.
To learn more about Cindy Bogart and Mary Gervais and Artisans List, visit artisanslist.com or our website for more information on guests. Thanks for joining us in this episode of the Home Business Podcast. Share your feedback with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and our website, homebusinessmag.com. Visit the website for information on advertising, subscribe to our newsletter. Please visit our sponsors. For more information, visit homebusinessmag.com or the expo at homebusinessexpo.com. I'm Richard Captain Anderson saying anchors away. We'll talk with you soon. Until then, make it a great home-based biz day. <laughs>